All right, nice. Should be working now. Everybody here now online? Okay, now you're done? Okay, good. Right, so as I said, we're going to take a look at module two, sequences, series, and approximation, right? Okay. Let's, let's take a look at what's a sequence. We'll do a couple examples on this. Right, I'll forward these slides as well, but you know, I'll take a while, right? So we're going to do some writing in the meantime. Okay, so a sequence is a set of numbers governed by a particular formula. So for example, if I give you a, if I give you a simple sequence here, u to the n is equal to 2n plus one, right? We can find the first four terms in the sequence if needed, right? Plug in n is one, plug in n is two, plug in n is three, plug in n is four, right? And you'll end up with the first four terms of the sequence. Are you okay with that? So that's a nice simple sequence there, right? There are two other sequences that you all should know about. Um, the first sequence is AAP, next is a GP, right? The general form for an AP, right, um, follows this little nice little formula here, A plus N minus 1D, and for GP, is A by R to the N minus 1, right? All right, um, you should remember how to work this out. But for AP, the first term is A, second term is A plus D, and you keep adding on D for all the, for all the, all the other terms, right? Next for GP, first term is A, second term is AR, third term is AR squared, AR cubed, so on and so on, right? So these are two popular sequences that we should know about, right? AP, GP, and well, the one I showed you a while ago. Yeah, nine, huh? I was this is some add mass here. Yeah. APs and GP, some add mass, right? If you didn't see it, well, I just write now some of the terms here for you. Yeah, yeah, we might get some. All right, so I just going back to the definition on the first example, right? Finish right? Somebody write in? All right, so that's an example of a simple sequence here, right? Um, sequences could be two types. It could be finite or infinite, right? A finite sequence looks like this here, right? Two to the n, uh, two n plus one, where n goes from, n goes from one to five, right? That'll give you a finite sequence, but there are sequences where n will be all the natural numbers, <clears throat> that's here. When n is all the natural numbers, you put all the n values in here, you'll end up with a infinite sequence, right? So there are two types of sequences, finite, that, that countable, infinite, that not.
all right? <clears throat> right, and then these finite se sequences could either do two things, they could converge or diverge, right? We wanna focus on this a little bit, right? How to know if a sequence converges. All right, so how to know if a sequence converges, right? Let, let's see if this rule here makes sense, right? So, oh, sorry, I left out one. I give you periodic, periodic as well, right? It could be convergent, divergent, or periodic. All right, let's look at the condition for something to be um, convergent, right? So this here is the rule. Right? So for some for a sequence to be convergent, sorry, for a sequence to be convergent, the limit of the sequence as n approaches infinity should be some value L. Right? So as n approaches infinity, Right, the sequence should approach some value L. Okay, so that's the condition for something to be um, convergent. If it's not convergent, then it's divergent. If it's neither, then it's actually periodic. So we need to remember our limit rules here. So I wanna spend a little time to just help you go over some limit rules, right? Okay, so let's just run over some uh, rules and limits, right? Um, so if I give you a limit, as n approaches some value, let's call that value e of e to the n, right? If there's a constant in front k, we can pull the k on the outside, right? We could pull the k on the outside. I I'm just giving you some rules, right? All right, I'm gonna change this to some other value, right? Let's say I gave you something like this. Let's say I gave you two sequences, A to the N and the next sequence, B to the N. Then we can split it up, right? Minus as well. The limit as n approaches infinity of a to the n plus or minus the limit as n approaches infinity of b to the n. Right? So you can do them individually. Same thing if we multiply or divide. Right, you could break it up like this, the limit as n approaches infinity of e to the n all over the limit as n approaches infinity of b to, b to the n. Right, just some of the rules for you to remember when you're simplifying limits, right? There's some unit one, right? Right, um, If you have a limit as n approaches infinity of some function, right? Let's say the function is f of x. And you end up with in infinity over infinity. What is called that again? If you plug in the values now and you get infinity over infinity, what is called that? Right, good. It's said to be undefined. This here is undefined, right? If it's undefined, you have two, three techniques that we could use. So to simplify, the first is uh, factorize. If that doesn't work, 
we divide by the highest power. And last, Le Hopital. Right? So those are the three options that we have um, if we end up with something on the final. All right, anybody writing? Anybody writing online? Okay, good. So let's give it a little try. So let's start here. So determine if a to the n, which is uh, n plus one over n, you wanna know if it converge onto or not. So we need to find a way to simplify it, right? So you want to see how to simplify it. So the limit as n approaches infinity of n over n, right? So I just break it up a little bit. Well, I expand it back out n over n plus one over n, right? And then after that, n over n is one, right? Plus one over n. Then I'm going to unplug in infinity, right? When I reach here, I'm going to plug infinity in here. What is one on infinity again? What is one over infinity? What do you remember? Anything divided by infinity is? How much time infinity could go to one? Can it go at all? No. Nah. So one divided by infinity is zero. All right, one divided by infinity is zero. Okay, nice. So therefore, one plus one on infinity, that's one plus zero. So the value is one, All right? So what that simply means is this. It means that the sequence converges because, it means that the sequence converges because as n approaches infinity, this n over, n plus one over n, it converges to the value one, right? So the rule is satisfied and we can say that it is converged.